Welcome back. We have another book review for you today. We're looking at Union with Christ by J. Todd Billings. It's Reframing Theology and Ministry for the Church. And I absolutely love this book. It is a retrieval of the doctrine of union with Christ for the sake of the ministry of the church. It manages to both recover something old, uh, a doctrine that maybe we've forgotten or that's fallen by the wayside, but also do some really important work of constructive theology. So it kind of corrects our vision of what ministry might look like, particularly a ministry that's all about our effort and our work and centers it on our union with Christ, our being adopted as children of the Father through Jesus Christ by the Spirit. The first chapter focuses on that metaphor of adoption, that biblical image of our relationship with God as those who are adopted in Christ. And it's an antidote to some of the more common ways our culture and even people in the church think about God. Billings talks about moralistic therapeutic deism. That comes out of the research of Christian Smith that presents a what he calls a convenient and yet distant deity. And yet, by being adopted, God is closer than we might imagine, and yet we have a more profound and beautiful relationship with him. And through adoption, he also speaks of that we receive both justification and sanctification through union with Christ. It's not that we're saved through Jesus and then sanctification, becoming holy, is something we have to do ourselves, but both are gifts that we receive in and through Jesus. After that, Billings moves to talk about total depravity, which seems like a kind of downer topic in a book, but he, he contrasts it or connects it with total communion. So how we think about sin and about fallenness is related to how we think about the end of the Christian life, the purpose of the Christian life, union with God. And so he critiques the the acronym TULIP, that's not actually a faithful representation either of Reformed theology or of the canons of Dort, but he also speaks of total depravity, not as we're all the worst we could be all the time but that it touches every single area of our life. It's not intensive, but extensive. So total depravity means that sin touches every single area of our life. Our mind, our heart, our will, our bodies, the ends of creation. And therefore, God's redemption touches the full extent as well. So everywhere that we're fallen, therefore Jesus redeems. And so there is good news on the other side of total depravity. Next, he talks about union with Christ as being related to how we come to know God. So he talks about revelation and God's incomprehensibility, God being beyond our ability to grasp, and yet God also makes himself known to us. God condescends, he stoops down to reveal himself to us, and it's true, and it's faithful knowledge, but we don't know God as God knows himself, and God's not something that we can get a hold of and wrap our arms around to comprehend, but yet God does reveal himself truly, and that knowledge is in Christ. And so union with Christ is essential for knowledge of God in and through Scripture. Next, Billings talks about how union with Christ and the Lord's Supper connect to the work of justice. He works through some of the teaching of the Belhar appreciatively, but also pushing a bit in different directions than the Belhar might but how the supper itself and our union with Christ at the supper is connected with our union together as the body of Christ and therefore our justice when it comes to how we treat and how we live together as the body of Christ. And in the last chapter is the hardest hitting of the whole book. It's where Billings levels a critique of incarnational ministry. That is the kind of ministry that would speak about how just as Jesus, just as the Son took on flesh in Jesus, we need to take on the cultures. We need to become incarnate in the culture in which we are living through that cross-cultural ministry as incarnation. And he affirms a lot of the impulses that this is working towards. 
he affirms a lot of the positive gains, positive impulses of incarnational ministry, but also says that it's theologically problematic, but also can lead to some pretty dangerous and damaging practical consequences to think of and to live out our ministry as trying to be incarnating the gospel. And so he offers instead participation ministry so that God is at work. God in Christ is at work and we, in union with him, in participation with Jesus, then we can live out and do ministry in this cross-cultural way that actually has better resources and better, more healthy, faithful, fruitful results by living out this new model, which is actually an old model of what it looks like to do ministry. So I highly recommend this book. It is both a recovery, particularly of the work of John Calvin and Franciscus Unius and Herman Bovink and others, the recovery of the doctrine of union with Christ, but also really connects with on-the-ground ministry. So it's not a, a theology book that is just for people in the academy or just people who are interested in theology, but for those who are doing ministry in the churches, this is something that you should pick up and read. But know that it is going to stretch you. If you're not used to reading theology, this is uh, what I like to call a third gear book. I like to think of theology in five gears, like the gears of a, of a car, that as you move up the gears, the engine moves faster, it gets louder, it can it has a lot more power, but it's a bit more challenging for, for some people. And so some of the, the knowledge that you're expected to have, the, the t terms it uses, the complexity of the argument gets more in the, the higher up you go in the gears, whereas sometimes going a lower gear, that's more accessible. It's not necessarily better or worse theology, but more accessible. And so this is probably about a third gear book. So if you're used to reading, or not used to reading theology, but used to reading kind of regular kind of Christian living books, this is going to stretch you a little bit. But it's not something that I think you won't be able to handle. Billings writes quite accessibly, but know that it's going to stretch you to actually think more theologically than you might normally have to do. But again, I highly recommend this book. I uh, invite you to pick it up and uh, read it. If you have a book that you would like me to read and review, please comment below or find me on Facebook or Twitter and let me know what books you would like me to read and review on this channel. If you like these reviews, please subscribe to the channel and like the video and hit that notification bell so that you can be updated on all new reviews that will come on this channel. And if you like how I think about books and about theology, please consider checking out my own writing. I'll have a link to my book, Our Only Comfort, in the description. It's a series of 364 daily devotions through the Heidelberg Catechism. It's designed for individual use and for families. So if you're interested, please check that out below. And thank you so much.